Hi everybody, it's Kathy here from Kathy Loves a Scrap and I'm coming to you from the land down under today and I am preparing bases for all about that base, no trouble, using 20 base pages in November. And these are the three that I've created today using some scraps that I've just pulled together from my Christmas pile. So my base one, I'm using a frame that I cut out for a layout many, many years ago. I can't even remember how long ago it was that I cut this one out. And I've had it sitting in a box where I put all my frames that I don't use on my layouts to use somewhere else. And this one says Merry Christmas around in each of those little dots. So I'm just putting this frame down onto a blue base because we're allowed to have one piece of 12 by 12 to pull it together. So I'm using the blue and I've got the frame. And as you can see, I went around and put one down at a time and that ensured that I was getting it down nice and flat against the edge. Now I have this piece of paper left over from a very recent layout and I am going to tuck it down the bottom as a horizontal strip across the page. Now at first I thought I could just put all the strips that I have of this together but I decided to break it up. Now I'm just tucking it in under the frame so that it looks like it's part of that layout and the frame is over the top. Then I have this other one which I'm putting to the top here and once again I'll also put that uh, frame in underneath so that it all fits in nice and tight. So that's how this layout um, starts and I have this one more horizontal strip and I contemplate putting it up against the other to make it a, a thirds equal. Um, however, I can't exactly line up the stars in the paper well. So I go with another break there with a belly band across that blue and this will be an interesting start for a layout. Now I might, when I come to do it, put some mixed media into that blue. I may use it to guide the photos. Um, it'll be interesting. I'm not sure. Then I thought I might add these little bits as banners, but I took them off and said no. Base number two. This is another horizontal strip one, but it's got a bit of a difference. This time I'm going to use um, up all of this nice paper that I have left over from a layout. Uh, I think in the layout I used it with the script side. So these flowers, these uh, Christmas roses are beautiful. So I'm going to utilize them for this layout. So I've gone with a dark green base this time and I always like a frame, you know that. I always try to frame my layouts. So I'm going to build a frame this time and it's going to be a little bit different too. So I'm using strips of this uh, text side of that paper and I had this little piece left over as well. So I'm able to cut those strips down. And that will leave a strip in the middle that is meeting, which you'll see in a second. But that's okay because I'm going to use some other paper to cover that up. So I'm now going to have this border around this page. And all of this is made from scraps. So none of this is new except for the 12 by 12 cardstock, which I'm using. And everything on this layout is scrapped from a previous layout. So I... I'm getting a lot of paper dust out of this paper. It's a, a three core paper and when you cut into those sometimes they have lots of paper burrs and leave paper uh, dust everywhere. So that's the only downfall with this type of uh, thicker quality uh, cardstock that I use with the printing. All right, so I'm going to cut all of these into strips. And as I said, I am going to put one straight across the middle here to cover up that uh, missing space in the frame but that doesn't matter because the main strip which is going to go down the center of the page is also going to go overlap the border so it'll be balanced in that respect. I'm just trimming down all of these into strips because they lend themselves to that perfectly and what I'm going to do with these strips is I'm going to run them across the page horizontally and I'm just going to balance them out to the two halves and I'm only putting one strip on there because I may tuck things in I mean to, uh, need to lift it to put over the top of things when I actually sit and use it for a layout but we will see that will happen in November. I'm going to put them across the page so that they're balanced and that the colours are complementary so swap them around and make them a little bit more directed to what I need for this layout. Now the red's a bit too stark for there but I will be using it and I'm going to cut some more of this uh, text one which I'm able to use 
and because I'm going to have a strip down the middle it doesn't matter that it's in two halves. I'm going to change up the length of these just to give some difference to the um, layout so that it's not all against the framing but it creates some interest and as I said I'm doing these strips these horizontal strips with a bit of a difference I'm turning them into fishtail banners and I'm going to have those run across as the fishtail banner so you can see even the fishtails are at different depths which adds interest to the eye when you look at it and when I put them down they will all come across the page creating a step ladder with those with those banners so we're going to start building it now and as I said this core paper does have a lot of uh, paper dust which is annoying and I'm just trying to eliminate some of it off there over time that will fall off uh, it just doesn't come off straight away but it will fall off so by the time I go to use it it'll be gone probably uh, it's it's an interesting phenomena with the paper I, I'm really not sure why it happens but it's something to do with the pulp inside the paper and the way the materials are put together when they make it so I'm now putting them all down step by step this is how easy it is you can do it with any any paper that you have in the strips you can make them into three shell panels you can put them across and then I'm going to run this beautiful strip, as I said, down the centre. And now I have that beautiful uh, banner in the middle to use as a base or a grounding. And I'm just going to outline it with the uh, text strip that says Merry Christmas. And I'm going to use both of these to break up that stripe but to tie it in a little bit better and to balance with the red on both sides. So I'm going to line that one up and then I'm going to overlap it with this red one here and then that shows you how this all comes and is now ready to be used. I do have this tag here that I this cut apart that I will keep with the layout. I'm not sure where it'll go when it's finished but I will keep it with this layout because I will use it somewhere on that layout. And for my third and final one I'm going to use some border punches and this is another way of using up the scraps and getting creative. It too, this time I'm going to have a vertical. So I'm going to concentrate on the vertical and I'm going to use the paper punch here to create a decorative edge along each of the pieces that I'm going to use. And I'm going to show you that uh, even though my scraps aren't the full length of the 12 by 12, I'm still using them because I know that when I put down my embellishments or my uh, photos when I get to working on this layout, that they will cover up any shortfall and that's uh, how I'm stretching this across the page. And because of the uh, plaid in it, I'm able to do so. It blends together and I always have in the back of my mind that photos are going to be on this layout somewhere and then I can always manipulate those to uh, cover up any shortfalls in the paper. But I'm stretching what I've got. I'm using up my scraps, they're getting off my pile and they are on a layout and by the end of November they will be fully in a Christmas album ready to rock and roll uh, for those memories for everybody to look at. I've used a Swiss dot white uh, cardstock here to add some uh, depth to this layout and I'm just going to layer these up onto the layout so that it looks like they're a um, feathered layered uh, page where I've, it looks like I've used three different types of paper to create the effect of that feathered layout with that beautiful decorative punch. I would have to say it's one of my favourite punches. Um, I don't use it anywhere near enough but I do love the effect that it has when I do use it. So I'm just putting this together and you can see that in the middle there there is a definite uh, gap but I'm not worried about that like I said because I know that photos are going to go in there somewhere and that will be covered up in the end. So I have put it into place. I'm going to use these reds here just to bring some highlight into the layout because it is very white at the moment but I want to bring the red out because it is meant to be Christmassy. So I'm going to put in some picture corners onto that layout. Now in that gap, you can see where I'm showing you how photos could go, how I could cover up the gap down there. I can even put in a, a big photo there with a 
journaling there. But whatever way I decide, that gap will be covered up by some element of the layout, I'm sure, when I go to use it in November. So photo quarters are always a good way to add some interest to a page. They can be a point for clusters to be built upon. They can even be tuck points for photos. So they're just something else to add in onto a layout. And because I had the scrap, why not? Put it in there. I'm Kathy from Kathy Loves to Scrap. Join Ginger and the rest of the crew in November. Don't forget to check us all back out. Give me a thumbs up if something um, inspires you to get those scraps out and create a page. Thanks for all those who subscribe and come back regularly. If you haven't already done so, please hit that button. Leave me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm Kathy from Loves to, Kathy Loves to Scrap. Find me on all my socials where I have all my layouts. Thanks once again for watching. I really appreciate your time. Stay tuned now and see what else I've been doing with paper.